Hello viewers, here's another video showcasing some upgrades for 2016. This time it's not on the bike, it's on the computer. And a uh, much smaller upgrade scale. Anyways, uh, rigs changed since last time I made a video of it. Uh, and I'm just going to go through some of the components and probably what stayed the same. Obviously the case stayed the same, but there's... An added fan shot on top like originally I had a 480 monster which is 80 millimeters thick and I had to go with a UT60 to be able to do what I wanted to do with this bend on top um, I wasn't able to do that with a monster because of clearance issues so anyways yeah I'm gonna go through the list of components first and then I'll show you guys a little bit more about the water cooling setup so for CPU it's a 5960x on a rampage 4 I mean rampage 5 extreme motherboard uh, Corsair 3000 megahertz DDR4 it's a 16 gigabyte kit 4x4 for graphics cards, we have a 980 Ti or 980 Ti classified. I have two of them in SLI with custom EK water blocks. You can see there, the water blocks themselves have lasered graphics. One of them says CBGA, the other one says classified. It's pretty neat. There's a Sonar STX sound card down there. That was pretty nice, and I just complement the audio setup, which I already, I already made a video of that. Now for fans, General Typhoons or AP15s, they are in push pull. Believe it or not, they do a significant um, improve. Well, I wouldn't say significant improvement in cooling, but they definitely help with thicker radiators and like the monsters have great benefit from it like i have i still have a 480 in the bottom it's in push pull but there are only four fans up front and two in the uh, and three on the other side the fourth one doesn't clear because of the uh, power supply and uh, the sli bridge i made a video on that too i never showed it on an actual build so here it is for SSDs, uh, 850 EVOs, I have one, maybe two of those, and then two hard drives, two actual mechanical hard drives. Man. There's an SSD in there, another one on top, and I have another SSD laying around somewhere that I have to plug in once I start running out of gaming space, but it's not the case yet, so anyways. Uh, the time of this filming, I haven't, I haven't had time to sleeve the PCI cables, so that's why they are like that. Um, just haven't had time with family and stuff and work and whatnot. But anyways, the project that I got done doing last weekend was the copper tubing that you see on the video. Now, just gotta have the right tools for it, I guess, but it's very, very easy. Like this are the Primochill rigid revolver fittings for a half inch outer diameter, and they're they were made for acrylic tubing, but they work just as good on uh, copper copper tubing. It's just essentially an O-ring. I also made a video about these fittings. They're really really good. Just an O-ring that's squeezed in together or squeezed into the pipe and it stands solid. Now when I was doing acrylic. I went back to soft uh, hose tubing because the tube cracked. Two of my tubes cracked. And, you know, my case flexes a little bit. There's vibrations from the desk. And any of those pipes that have a lot of tension will end up cracking over time. And, you know, I spend, I spend, I try to spend more time gaming than messing around with this. But, um, I just can't be worrying about, you know, are my tubes going to crack one day. So that's why, you know, I'm, uh, acrylic is nice take a couple of pictures and probably just go back to soft tubing but um if you're willing to spend the time to actually do copper 
Uh, it looks really nice and the tubes can be painted to any color you want. Now, the thing about painting them, uh, some people say, well, why would you paint copper? There's a couple reasons for that. Copper does, cor um, it doesn't corrode, but it develops like oxidation. Uh, that green stuff comes off. It comes off with like vinegar. It's not a big deal. But yeah, it can ruin the appearance or build over time. Now you can paint it like or powder coat it, whatever you want to do. And it won't affect your cooling performance because your radiators are the ones cooling. You know? So all that, that what would you paint copper? That's bullshit because you're not using your tubes as uh, to cool your PC. You're using the radiators. So yeah, you can paint them. Anyway, the rest is the same. The pump is the same. The D5. Now, originally I messed I messed this up. This port aligns perfectly with the CPU inlet, and I originally flipped them. I figure if you get opposite inlet, opposite outlet, you're good. But uh, this terminal actually was bypassing my cards when I first ran it, uh, just because the port on the left here is the one going up not this one so if I plug I plug in the inlet down here it was straight bypassing my cards and just in and, uh, and it didn't make sense why my cards were running so hot while everything else was pretty pretty good but anyways just be careful with these bridges if you run them in serial in a serial configuration make sure you use the right port so you will bypass your graphics cards what else do we have I also did copper in the basement of the case. I can show you guys really quick. Just gonna pop this off. That's the basement. That's the coolant's quick disconnect for draining the loop. And it's really, you know, bending is really easy. You can. You can get it done fairly quick, and just gotta have the right tools. Like if you if you have buy fifty feet of half inch copper from Home Depot, you can get a uh, tube straightener to straighten out the coils. You can get you know end up with something like this, it's straight, and then make your bend. Now the fifty foot is it's enough because some some bends won't come out perfect like this one. On this side came came out just right, but then the one on this side, you can see the marks on them. And a tube like this, even though it's ruined, or you know, it, it'll still work if you don't mind having that. But that'll actually slow down your flow by a little bit, not a whole lot, but just keep that in mind. You can use this to measure because you see you see the markings that are on this tube. Um, that's that's where the holder goes and then this see the, the tube has a little clamp the tube bender has a little clamp and this is where it holds it and that way you can mark it to see where the curve will end up so for a bend like this you know you can make the first one no problem you have to worry about it but when you come out to the second bend you need to know exactly where you need to bend it, you know, because you can come over a little too, too, too long or end up too short. So, you know, there, there are tricks for that, but that's the hardest part and the hardest part is actually really easy. So, you know, that does it guys. Uh, that's the build for 2016. Uh, that, those are the upgrades for 2016. And I don't plan on servicing this in like another year. Maybe replace the O-rings on the fittings as a safe, as a safe safety. Uh, the, the copper shouldn't crack. And I'm using Mayhem X1 clear coolant. So the, there's no dye in my coolant. So there's nothing to like, break down and block my block so you know just i would plan on servicing it once a year at least because soft tubing I, you know i had to service it every six months replace all the hoses and stuff to prevent them from breaking breaking down and blocking causing blockages in my blocks so you know this setup should be less maintenance and still run pretty cool and look clean
It just looks a little bit cleaner than my um, flexible tubing setup. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Those are the upgrades. Uh, peace out.